In this video, my goal is to show a complete build of this latest Division C design from start to finish. <clears throat> and I also wanted to show how we can uh, use the data from a previous test to try and optimize the mass and increase our score for the next time. So if you remember, if you watched the last video, <clears throat> this is uh, my Division C number seven. It it weighed 11.71 grams when it was dried out, and it held almost 24 kilograms, <clears throat> which was uh, a lot. And that's that's really too much for what we want for this uh, this competition. Um, probably the optimal failure would be right around. Well, obviously it'd be right around 15, but because we need to guarantee <clears throat> 15 kilograms for the bonus. You probably want to design these in the 16 to 17 kilogram range so you can test it ahead of time close to 15 kilograms if not at 15 kilograms so you can uh, guarantee a maximum score during a test. So I wanted to show what what I recorded through through the process uh, because it's just me and there's no team that I'm working with uh, or you know a bunch of students I'm just recording it uh, in a notebook, um, and I can talk about what I recorded here. Uh, in, in general, it's recording everything necessary to rebuild it and to know what, what is in it. Um, just as a side note, w when I've, you know, when we work with, you know, a team of eight or 10 people, I'd make something more like this. Uh, this is a, like a blank sheet where you could have the students or in this case this was my coach's copy we'd fill in uh, things as we go <clears throat> you know in the process and then so this covers I think about 12 different builds this data would eventually get put into a spreadsheet so we could track it uh, more easily and and maybe I'll make a video on, on that in itself because there's some <clears throat> there's some some good information on how to to track things and uh, especially when you get closer to competition. But for now, let's put that aside. Okay, so for this design, um, my sketch here is kind of small. I'll, I'll try and make an, a new one that's bigger for the, the new version. But I'm recording uh, the leg, you know, the, the most important pieces are the leg pieces. Right, so the primary leg piece <clears throat> and the angled piece here, that's what these are. I, I had a normalized length of 31 centimeters, and then these pieces were about 1.35 grams. These pieces were about 0 .80, uh, 8, 8 grams. Um, things like the, I recorded the bass uh, the tension parts, and in this case, I recorded the entire length of how these pieces are bought. So I think these are two foot lengths. So it's not, it's not the actual mass of the cut piece. Uh, all you need to do is record to be consistent in how you record it. So sometimes I'll record the, the actual mass that's going in, like for this top piece or these cross members or when I'm doing the legs, it's much more convenient to, to record the, the normalized piece <clears throat> because this is what you typically have a library of components built up uh, to choose from. And you, you can watch my uh, balsa library video to see how I, you know, create, uh, you know, uh, parts to choose from that are so close together. Okay, so I also recorded the completed sides the the final weight in the as built condition, which the relative humidity is about sixty percent right now, it's pretty high. And then after it's been in the dry box for a couple days, it typically loses maybe two two or three percent. Uh, and then I record uh, how much it held, the dead weight in my test, and then the score. And in this case, the actual efficiency was actually much higher than even the score with the bonus. So what, what can we learn from this? So to take the next steps, 
this this bridge here held almost 50% too too much weight, right? So for uh, for some of the primary components, we can significantly uh, scale back the mass. Now uh, these tension parts are already 1 16th by 1 16th bass. I don't have anything dimensionally smaller than that. Um, but I have I have a couple I have some components that are slightly uh, lighter so I think like these are point point six three grams so we're gonna use we're gonna use that instead of the point seven seven here just to give that a try um, we'll leave the top piece about the same we'll we'll leave these two components a, a little bit lighter but not much these are pretty important uh, components. And then the legs, I'm going to go with, uh, this is where we're going to get most of our weight reduction. So instead of 1.35 grams, we're going to jump down to about 0.9. Uh, and instead of 0.8, we're going to jump down about 0.72 or so. And one of the reasons I'm not going too much lighter on these top pieces is because if you get into the really uh, light balsa, there, there's a strong possibility that, that this joint uh, will will not be strong enough uh, holding on to this uh, piece. I, I saw that once before, so we'll see. Basically, this is a trial and error. This is basically my my first attempt at a big drop in mass from from uh, from this design. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started here. So this is going to be division C number eight. I, you know, sometimes I'll record if there's a design difference. In this case, it's a 140 millimeter wide base. Um, and then just a sketch. Let's see. I'll try and make it make it bigger this time. And this doesn't have to be accurate by any means. And then. Cross pieces uh, and tension pieces, and then what our legs are. So I record the dimensions. So these three thirty second inch by ten millimeters, and in this case we're going to be using 0 0.92, 0 0.89, 0 0.88, and 0.88. And the top pieces are uh, 1 16th by 10 millimeters. And this will be 0 0.71, 0 0.74, 0 0.72, and 0.72. So these together are around 1.6 grams. Up here, they were about 2.1, a little over 2.1. So altogether, we should be, you know, we can predict we're going to be probably around two grams lighter than, than this 12. So that's kind of what we're hoping for, like a, a 10 gram as built and probably slightly less than 10 grams uh, when it's dried out for competition. And hopefully that will allow us to have an actual competition score that's over 2000. Because we know this design can do it because the actual efficiency was over 2000 with this, with this build. Okay, so let's see what else we got. Um, just, I think these were, I think these are all about, uh, yeah, 0 0.63 and 1 16th by 1 16th bass. And all, all this piece too. These cross pieces are um, this one right here. This is uh, 1 8th by 1 16th mass. And the, the 2 foot mass is uh, 1.16. 1, 1. That's not how much these little pieces are going to weigh, but that's what the piece it came from weighed. And again, the cross member, uh, that's a piece of balsa. This is roughly... Um, uh, maybe uh, it's kind of a uh, 1 16th by maybe uh, 332nd 1 16th by 
332nd. And you can see up here, the piece came from a 0.64 gram. That's what this one is also. So 0.64. Okay, and then um, this top piece, we'll, we'll, we'll cut it and get the actual measurement. So I think we're ready to start building now. Okay, so we'll put this aside. And we don't need this. Oh, we can have that. <clears throat> okay, so this is my scale drawing of the side view. Uh, the the shaded is the, the the new design. So if if you've been watching my other videos, I had to change the design a little bit to to narrow the angle because it was too wide at the base. So. I didn't redraw the whole thing. I just changed the angle and worked out how it uh, would be. So the shaded area is what we're using here instead of the other piece. Uh, this is uh, 40, 45 centimeters uh, across, right? Exactly. So this is fully to scale. And a couple other measurements on here. This is 12 point centimeters. 12.5 centimeters high. So this is an important dimension because the, the pass-through block here, which I now have on a stick, it has to be able to go through the entire span of the bridge like this, um, right? So, and we'll leave ourselves a little bit more room than that uh, because the the, the tension piece here is not right at zero either it's a little bit higher but in general this has to this has to pass through there uh, which, which this is kind of a minimum line for that and then another rule line or another part of the rules is the the loading block here is uh, it's it's well above the minimum right so this is this is at 17. 17.4 uh, the rules are like 15 it has to be above 15 from here to here so I didn't even draw that line but that's <clears throat> that's about here so we're we're well in the rules for how high the loading block needs to be okay so yep first thing we need to do is um, build our two sides so we can take uh, two of our pieces, they're pretty much identical. Um, and we want to have uh, this top piece. So this is, <clears throat> this is four centimeters. So we can just cut two pieces at four centimeters here. Can measure we can weigh uh, we can weigh that so that's point three say point three two actual so that's almost identical to the other one I'm just recording this on my notebook off camera okay so now we will start to assemble this I like to you know, so I'm working on relatively thick cardboard, and it's just, just simple graph paper. Um, and there's nothing too super fancy about this uh, process. So first, I'll I'll pin this piece into place using the graph paper. Make sure it's um, as level as possible. Okay, so we also know this design, the, the angle down here is 30, 38 degrees. <clears throat> so if, um, and sometimes if you're not sure of that, let me grab a piece of scrap wood here. 
if you want to test that out before you uh, make any cuts, right? So you can set this at 38 degrees. Make the angled cut and just kind of make sure this is going to uh, this is going to work a test fit so that's good so we know that's correct so now we can cut our actual pieces we'll do this for all four this miter cutter is an extremely handy tool, uh, almost one of the most important tools to have for these types of things. Okay, so now we have our angles cut. Okay. Now what I like to do is, uh, again, test fit this. Yeah, that's good. And now, if you watch my gluing video, I really like to see what, where I'm going to be applying the glue. So I like to draw, draw the line on there. We'll do it for this side too. And it's, it's okay that it's going above the top because we're going to trim that later. Okay. Now we can get our glue out. Don't need too much at a time. Okay, so this is a very, very important joint. And I found that uh, you want to err on the side of too much glue here than not enough. Um, the, the mass of the amount of glue we're using is not, uh, not nearly as problematic as if you make a bad joint here. So I like to coat this entire area with, uh, with glue. So it usually takes, <clears throat> several uh, several applications of this technique and you want to just make sure it's fully covered and again you want to move quickly so then hold this bottom piece and then press that into place and we'll hold that for maybe 10 seconds or so And don't be afraid to press it uh, fairly firmly. Okay, so now because this is uh, this this can rotate, this is not totally pinned down. I do like to pin this side down a little bit before doing the other side. So that just will kind of hold that one into place. And now we will glue glue this side in. Make sure that's fully covered. Try and make this as accurately as possible. The more perfect you can get it, the less sanding you'll have to do later. And then we can uh, hold that in place. Maybe 10 seconds here too. Okay, now we can just kind of pin this one in too. Okay, and the other piece now is the tension piece that goes across the bottom. 
that's going to be out of this basswood. And again, these dimensions, or you can cut it a little long because we're going to be trimming it afterwards. So I like to just give a little mark there. It's always good to test fit it to know where you're going to, to put this. Now apply glue on this ridge here, maybe two or three. Again, working as fast but as neatly as possible. And then see if we can install this. Okay, and now we try and hold this for maybe 10 or 15 seconds because it's a uh, basswood. It's a little bit more dense, so you want to give the glue a little bit more time to seep in to make a, a good, uh, good joint. And again, I'm holding this fairly tight. You don't want to crush it by any means, but you want to hold it pretty firm. And if your finger starts to stick, you know, which it will be common, just kind of roll your finger off instead of pulling it off because that will have a tendency to pop this off. Okay, so this guy, this part of it at least is done. So I like to, we'll set that aside. And now we will just uh, do it again for the other side. mark here so I know where to glue. Okay. Again we want to cover this entire area completely and line up the bottom. And then hold that for maybe 10 seconds or so. Ten seconds. Pin that, and now our other side tension member. 
again, it doesn't have to be terribly accurate because we're going to trim that in a minute. Put the glue on as carefully and quickly as possible. that for 10 or 15 seconds. to prevent too much sticking. Okay. So now we have two sides, two flat sides that are done. And now we get the first uh, chance to, to trim these. So, because the, one of the, the next step will be to uh, put, put our edge piece on actually this way All right so so this this needs to be really uh, flat and it's good to, to get this you know excess off so let's do one at a time so there's there's three tools to, that I use to trim uh, the most coarse is uh, wire cutters where you can just snip off a lot of it the next tool is a Dremel Moto tool with a, a sanding block, which is really nice. And then finally a, a, a squared off sanding block for, uh, uh, and you basically do it in that order. Uh, I mean, you, you, could, you could use the Dremel to, to sand all of this off, but um, you know, that just makes a lot of sawdust. So what I like to do is snip off what you can first. And again, this doesn't have to be super accurate. But you, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to sand all this off. You can do it, but it's just it's not uh, a good use of time. So you can still see there's a little nub there. And now we can use the moto tool. So now one one handy trick for this uh, tool, you notice the it spins uh, clockwise here. So when sanding anything with this, you want to make sure that the the sanding wheel is not trying to pop off your piece. So you always want to try and sand it uh, into another piece, like this angle or if you can't do it that way you can also do it vertically but you would you would not want to use this sanding this way because it's trying to then pop this piece off um, yeah and you whenever possible you want to hold your piece as close to the thing you're sanding as possible um, to make it more sturdy so I'm gonna be holding it this close to this what I'm sanding here I don't want to I don't want to be holding it here and trying to sand this because this is too uh, too flimsy and you don't need to have uh, you don't need to have it be on su super fast uh, just like that and then we'll do uh, this side Usually I will sand this like uh, hunched over in, in a better position. So normally I won't be doing this, you know, out in front of me, but to, to have it on camera, that's the way it needs to be. So ideally you would have it closer to your body and as in control as you can. Um, 
but I'm gonna try and keep this so you can see what's going on. Okay, so that's pretty good. This is pretty, uh, pretty light balsa, so it, it sands quickly. And then we'll just do the other side. So that's pretty good with, with that. And then finally the sanding block to get this, this piece straight uh, because that will be very important for gluing our angles on. And this side. Okay, so now now we have two flat sides uh, done, and you can we'll leave the top sanding for later, but you can you can test fit these together real quick if you have the bottoms together. You know, you can get an idea for how accurate this is going to be. Yeah, so that's that's pretty good. Okay, now for maybe maybe the trickiest part of this build is is gluing on that angled piece. Uh, let me get some pieces here. So this is a big sheet of wax paper. And what's going to happen is these are our angled pieces. These are 1 16th by uh, 10 millimeters. Just get rid of some glue on my fingers. Uh, and these are gonna be glued squared off on the bottom and, and uh, you know, all the way to the top. And we can leave this extra, we'll trim that off later. Now, um, so the key is to make this, you know, as, as flush as possible. So one little technique I came up with, this is a scrap piece of uh, 330 seconds, which is the same thickness as this. You can put this under here. And now this piece, when we glue it here, this can be pushed down onto that scrap piece. It's got a piece of, uh, wax paper on there so it won't stick to it. And then, you know, we can glue it like that. And that works pretty well. Now, here's the trick. We need to get a film of glue along this entire edge as quickly as possible uh, and make sure it's it's all uh, good. All right, so that's, <clears throat> that's a challenge, um, but it's not, it's not too bad. I can show you how I do it. Make sure you've got enough there. But once you've coated this entire thing, you need to quickly attach this piece. So we're gonna do that. So basically we get our drops ready. And then as quickly as possible. I like to start at the top because then the glue will run down if it uh, drips at all. Sometimes it's a little tricky to see where you left off, but when in doubt, apply a little extra glue. 
this bottom area is pretty important. We'll uh, we'll do that. Okay, so that's all on there. Set that down as quickly as possible. Set that there, and then we make we make that, and then we can lift it up pretty quickly, and then turn it and apply pressure here all at once and hold this for maybe eight or 10 seconds. There we go. So that's, that's pretty good and this is pretty flush. So that worked out pretty well. So now we have to do the other side. So we have to think about how we're gonna do that. So, you know, I'm right-handed, so I like to apply the glue with my right hand, but then this has to turn around and go here. Uh, so just, it's easy to, uh, to sometimes get messed up like that. So let's see if we can do this. around as soon as that sets a little bit you can turn it on its end and again hold it here for about 10 seconds Now one more thing I like to do with these, because this joint is so important, and this joint is too, I like to give it some extra glue. Um, and, you know, I did a test, it adds maybe 0.2 grams of glue to the entire build, but uh, it's, it makes it uh, much more uh, <laughs> safe. So just reinforce the joints here. And with the pin, you can kind of just uh, get it in in the the corner there. And it doesn't it doesn't make a a fillet or anything like wood glue would, but it makes sure the entire length of that joint is uh, is glued properly or you know has has some glue on there. this sign Okay, that's pretty good. So aside from trimming, this side is done. So now we're gonna just set that aside and do this one, hopefully same way. Feel free to skip ahead in the video or turn it up to 2x speed or something. This side is the exact same process.
I do think this is where using thin glue or relatively thin glue, again this is 50 CPS, uh, this is a good, a good application of that. If you're using much thicker glue, it would probably take a whole lot more uh, glue to do that and it would be heavy. side. This is certainly a part where you would not want to be distracted. Again, this, this part may not be 100% necessary depending on uh, how, how good your initial glue, gluing was, but I haven't built enough to, uh, you know, want to stop doing this just yet to, to get that last tiny little bit of weight. Because I, I have seen, I have seen builds uh, rip apart at this joint. Okay. Okay, so now we have both sides, they need to be trimmed and sanded a bit, but um, for the most part, uh, they're done. We're going to use our, use our pliers to snip the majority of this off. to do is uh, tape these together with bl blue painters tape so blue painters tape is pretty nice it uh, well for painting and for applications like this because it's 
it's strong and it's sticky, but it doesn't, uh, it's not too sticky and it's not permanent or not uh, on the short term. So you can pretty safely glue or, you know, tape stuff together and be able to get the tape off without ruining what you're doing. So even, even wrapping this up, so I just wrapped this glued, or sorry, taped them together with the bottoms as flat as possible. And then we'll do this side. And it doesn't have to be uh, super tight. It just needs to hold this, hold this in place. And now we can see how we can sand this top flat uh, all at once. So first we'll use our Dremel to get rid of uh, some of this uh, angled piece that we don't need. Finally, we can use our, you can hold it, hold it together tightly with your fingers and now you can sand it with a sanding block to get it uh, all flat uh, together. You kind of go in circles, sometimes is good. So that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So now we can carefully untape this. <laughs> yeah, even even uh, taped onto itself, it's like it just did there. It still came off without hurting the part. Normally it just does that. Okay, so now we have our two completed sides. And I like to, uh, I like to weigh it at this point just as a, a measurement. Uh, so now I need to grab a cup here. Hold on. So because this can't sit on this to, to weigh it, the easiest way to do it is to put something like a big cup on there and then hit tear and it will, uh, it will zero out the mass of that cup. Now you can put your thing in there. And now we have uh, four point, four point uh, one zero for this half. And we really are hoping that they're about the same. So there we go, 4.09. And that that is, um, if we look back at our old or last design, they were 5.17 and 5.12. So we've saved, uh, uh, what is that, 2.1 grams already with uh, these sides. So that's that's a good start. Let's see, all right, so the next piece is to assemble this. I don't believe we'll need this, so we'll put this off. Now 
this is a, the 3D uh, printed assembly jig I made. Uh, basically made it in three parts. Uh, the middle and two sides and just glued it together with uh, the strong constructors and adhesive. It'd be nice to print the whole thing in one, but my printer can't print parts that big. So it's good to, even if you have a jig like this, it's good to uh, do the work on graph paper so you can uh, make sure things are aligned, um, especially, uh, yeah, just so you can make sure you know what's going on. I've got the lines drawn at 45 centimeters. So quickly what we're going to be doing here is, you know, putting the sides on like this. And then while it's in this form, we can then uh, glue the uh, cross members on here. So again, our, our friend the painter's tape is, is a, a decent way I've found to, to do this. Now you want to make sure the, the, the feet are on the surface, flat surface. So when you're taping this, make sure you don't tape it and it's uh, holding it off the ground, right? So um, kind of have it pushed down a little bit. And then this is taped. Make sure these things are touching the ground, which they are there. And then you can also, you can't see this side very well, but the other side you will. I'm also just taping it. Uh, to the edge pieces here so they don't uh, come up, come loose. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if I can do this without getting in the way too much. Again, these don't have to be super tight. You just want to make sure it's uh, not going to move and it's in the right spot when you glue the or yeah when you glue the cross pieces on. So yeah, just enough to hold it in place. And then once once this is taped in, you know, just make sure these legs are touching the ground. And they're, you know, not going anywhere. Okay. Oh, I forgot to make, uh, see, this is what I do when I do it live. So usually I like to uh, make the mark on the legs at 12.5 centimeters. I forgot to do that. So I'm not going to pull this off the jig. So I'm just going to wing it here with this. Um, block and you know it, it doesn't as long as you're not um, too too short right give yourself a little extra space you know you probably want to have at least be a millimeter or so extra I guess this is a reasonable way to do it, but if, if you mark it ahead of time, um, it works also. Okay, so yeah, those are the those are the marks. These ones in the bottom, you can just put it as low as you can get it. Um, so yeah, let's start with that. So these bottom pieces. Again, we can, we can trim them a bit after the fact, so it doesn't have to be critically the same length 
or critically fit. Okay, those will be these pieces. This will go, go on the top side of our mark so we give ourselves even more extra room. Those are those pieces. And then finally, the top pieces. I'm still debating whether it's better to put this piece on the outside or put it on the top. Um, it's a little shorter on the top, uh, but it's not a, a flat, uh, you know, you, you have to do a little work to make these flat because of the angle. Um, but, but this one worked fine on the top. So I think I'll, I'll just keep going with that. Because uh, because this is a little narrower, you can you can glue directly on here without um, without putting any wedge pieces. It will it will bow in a little bit, but that's that's okay because once the load gets applied, this whole thing is going to spread out a bit. Um, so that's not a problem. So let's. Let's get a little fresh glue on here. And if you watch my gluing video, you, you, yeah, this is kind of one of the rules where, you know, it's not always the case because we're gluing on a non-flat surface. Now these are flat, but it's angled. so. As soon as I start applying glue, the glue is going to tend to, to drip down. So you have to be extra careful where you're putting the glue <clears throat> and checking to see if it's dripping down. So sometimes you put it a little bit higher than where you want it uh, in cases like this. And then, you know, again, be as quick as possible. And then while you're holding this, I'm also pushing in to make sure that it's uh, at the right width. And again, this is bass to balsa, so I like to hold it for maybe 15, 15 seconds or so. It usually helps when you're building these things to have uh, music playing or something so you don't... Uh, you don't get bored and you get tempted to rush. Of course, as I'm making a video, I'm probably tempted to rush through it, so we'll see. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll get the other side now. Probably do a little reinforcing on this side too. And definitely press it flat, which will bow it in. But it's really important to have the entire surface glued, uh, the entire angled part of the leg glued to the cross member here. Cross piece. 
this piece takes a lot of load, a lot of lateral load, um, which is one reason why I didn't scale this one down too much. But it's possible that it could be smaller. Again, make sure you squeeze this uh, so you're getting the entire surface of the angled part of the leg glued with the cross member. That was not quite level, but that's that's because I didn't draw the draw the dots ahead of time as accurately as I could have. That's okay. It's better to be a little bit off than to try and fix a mistake like that, because you'll you'll wind up either ruining it or adding a lot of extra weight uh, to fix it. Okay. Next we're going to do the X's on the top. So what, what this does is, so if, if we didn't have that and, and um, we just put these pieces on the top, there's really, the only lateral support is the, the change in width. And that's not really enough with this. So this this would tend to be not sturdy in this direction. So when you <clears throat> when you put cross members on here like this, it it basically transfers the load from one side to the other, and it will um, will help make this more sturdy. So now we'll need four pieces that size. We can use. A And this is this is balsa. It's relatively dense balsa. It's not super dense, but it's not it's not light either. Oops. And we're really just going to go in the in the middle there. So we probably don't need to mark it, but it's going to be a diagonal piece. Again, it will drip as soon as you start. So it's important to press this too because it will um, it will bow in a little bit. side of the cross. Usually when I do crosses or any kind of X bracing, I like to put the glue in the middle after, after I glue the two pieces in so it can be more accurate. And when you're using a pin, there's usually enough flexibility to just uh, sneak it in there. 
and then uh, get that glue in there. Okay, so that side's done. So this is balsa to balsa, so seven or eight seconds is usually good enough to hold this to get a good joint. And again, don't worry, it's a little bit too long. We can just trim it at the end. But definitely don't forget to put this glue in the middle like that. Okay, the final piece is gluing the uh, top crosses, and that can be done once it's outside of the jig, because this jig is, you know, a little taller than uh, these pieces. But it's certainly sturdy enough now to uh, survive outside of the jig. Yep, there's a good sign. Okay, we don't need this. Now, the final piece are these two top pieces. And you can try and sand it flat if you want. I've, I've not even bothered with that much. Uh, it seems to be plenty strong, strong enough, um, which is gluing it to that angle. I think mainly because most of the, you know, the load is all vertical at that point. Well, it is pulling it apart, but the block itself is helping to hold that in, in place. So let's see what we can do. I do like to reinforce this joint after the piece is on there. And as long as the hole is big enough for your uh, your eye hook and chain, it uh, you know that size doesn't really matter too much. Okay, now we'll add a little extra extra glue up here. Make 
make sure that joint is good. Okay, that's pretty good. We're almost done. Um, we can just clip this off, save just a tiny bit. At this point, it's mostly just for uh, looks. You know, but you can take the time to really trim it if you want and sand it. Pretty much, that's pretty much it. Let's see. Let's move this out of the way. Well, let's see if it's at all level. I don't know if this table is terribly level. It's not bad. That's. Eh, it's not quite level, but we can see if this is close. That's not bad. Yeah, I would say this is at least as good as the last one I built, which held almost 24 kilograms. So I think it's going to be level enough for what we need to do. And then let's record. Let's record the final weight as built. So I'm going to guess, what am I going to guess, high nines maybe, let's uh, zero this out. Yeah, there we go, 9.82 grams. So that will, that will probably be more like 9.5 grams uh, when it's tested. So we'll do that in another video and I'll <clears throat> be sure to show how much this dries out and uh, loses some mass. But that would, uh, that would definitely put this as a competition score over 2000 if it held 15. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, and if it, if it breaks somewhere, then we go from there and modify uh, what we need to go. But uh, yeah, hopefully that helps you figure out how this type of design can be built. Certainly the most challenging thing are these angled connections because that's not something that you normally do with these other um, devices. But uh, other than that, uh, it's fairly straightforward, especially if you have a, a jig to assemble it. So I highly recommend that. Um, somebody asked for the 3D model for this. I posted it on uh, on the, the last videos in the comments section, you can download the STLs for, for that jig if you want to if you want to use it. Um, but yeah, let's see how this does in a, a couple days. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching.